Welcome to the DEF CON 813 talk, Threat Modeling, Do You Want to Play a Game? This is an introduction to the Elevation of Privilege game. Now, first of all, some information about the game itself. It was developed by Microsoft Product Manager Adam Showstack, and he actually has a full book on threat modeling, which is a very good read if you are interested in getting into more details about it. And so you can find his book on Amazon. Now, in order to play the game, you really need to start with some sort of data flow diagram or architecture diagram of your system. And it needs to have enough detail there where implementation details are shown. And this is mainly because you're going to be looking for flaws in the design or in the programming to, uh, to basically exploit uh, when going through the card deck in order to gain points. Now the card game rules are pretty simple. Each team consists of three to six players. There's a deck of 84 cards. There are six suits. Each suit is based on one of the letters of stride. So there's, you know, a suit for spoofing, a suit for tampering, etc. The cards are as you would expect. There's numbers two through 10. There's an ace, a king, a queen, and a jack. Now, as you go around in one turn, the highest card is going to take the trick, whoever starts the, the suit. And that is the case unless someone has an Elevation of Privilege card. So the Elevation of Privilege card can trump uh, any suit that is started for that round and, and take the trick. Obviously, you're you're, if you have an Elevation of Privilege card, you're going to have to actually play it. You're going to have to actually determine where there is an Elevation of Privilege vulnerability or, or exploitation that can be done on the game board. Mechanics here, you deal the cards clockwise. You're going to read your card and announce your threat when it's your turn. What you should be asking yourself internally is, you know, is this threat applicable? If the player with that card cannot link the threat to the system design that's being used, either because it's not applicable or because there may actually be a mitigation that is identified on the diagram to address that threat, then they would just, the play would just proceed to the next player and no point would be awarded. Now, though there are points awarded, the main goal behind this is obviously to identify bugs, uh, identify security design flaws and security holes um, within the architecture. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the game board in a little more detail. Now, before you can actually start playing the game, you need to actually take some time to go through an architecture diagram. Now, what I'm showing on the screen is something that I put together. I made this system up. It's, it's not a real system. However, it has a lot of features that are common for web applications and backend systems. And so what I've done is, I actually am describing various aspects of the application, its multiple tiers, as well as describing how some of the application code has been written. In other words, what techniques may have been used, for example, to authenticate a user, etc. And in order to help facilitate the playing of, of the card game, you really need to study the picture for, uh, for a little bit of time to, to get an understanding of, of what all is actually implemented for this particular system. Now, realize that I'm creating something here fictitious. Uh, in reality, you would do something, you know, based on a real system 
and either you would have programmers at the table, designers at the table, um, business analysts, or a conglomerate of different viewpoints that would know the particular aspects and particular protections that may be in place in the particular way that something might be coded. So let's take for example uh, this password reset flaw. So you can see up here from the authentication and authorization provider that is used in the application server that's over on the back end that I've put in here a note that there's a password reset flaw. In other words, there's no prompt for the old password when the user goes to reset their password. Now, what that means is that I'm pretending to be the, the coder or the designer, and I know for a fact that this system um, has, has this flaw. What that means is while the game is being played, this is a potential exploitation, a potential area that could be exploited by an attack. If you get the spoofing card, then you could actually use this particular weakness, spoof it, and then you get a point. And then of course the added dimension is you would add that to your JIRA bug tracker or whatever your bug tracking mechanism is in order to follow up with, with that finding to see if it does indeed need to be mitigated, redesigned, and fixed. So if we start looking at the cards and reading the particular attacks, what we're going to do is we'll read a card and then we'll see if we can find an exposure point back on our application, our fictitious ACME application. We'll just call it ACME to, in order to give it to, a name. So this particular card, the seven of spoofing says, an attacker can connect to a server or peer over a link that isn't encrypted, okay, or isn't authenticated, either one. So back in our picture, we actually have an FTP account that's used, of course, FTP is unencrypted, and it's being used between the web server and the database. Let's take a look at that. If we go back to our picture, we take a look at our web server, we can see that there's a connection point between the web server and this SQL database. And it says in the notes here that FTP runs on port 21. Uh, the account still uses a default password. Everything is in clear text and we don't have any kind of integrity check that is being done even when after the files are transferred. So that's definitely an exposure point. We would give ourselves uh, one point for finding that and then move on to the next card. So the next card that we see here is tampering. It says an attacker can alter information in a data store because it has weak ACLs or includes a group which is equivalent to everyone. Now on the picture, and I'm going to go back to the picture and show you, we have our web app server actually connecting to cloud storage and that connection is using a shared password. So this would definitely be an example of a weak ACL. There's no type of um, authorization code being done or token or anything like that. Let's take a look at it on the picture. So here we've got our WebSphere application server and it is connecting external to to the actual data center where this application resides. It's going outside of that, out into the internet to connect to this third party storage. And you can see the note here, it says, uses hard coded password, fixed key inside of app code to connect to the cloud storage, uses a shared key. So we would give ourselves a point for finding that vulnerability and of course add, add it to our bug tracking system. Now, one last thing I wanna say before we start playing the game is that the terminology that's used for both the programming implementation as well as the countermeasures may not necessarily be understood or 
commonly used by the participants of the game. And so this is really a learn as you go. Please ask questions if, if you're not clear on the way something is implemented, whether it's cookie security or the way passwords are held inside of the database, whether they're hashed or not, whether a salt is used, etc. This is really supposed to be a learning experience. And I would like to give liberty to people if, if there's some ambiguity and you want to read into there uh, something that would actually give you points for using the card, I, I think that you should go ahead and do that. So feel free to take some liberty with this. Have fun with it. We're going to play until someone uh, in, the, in each group gets up to 10 points and then of course they would be declared the winner and there will be prizes. So have fun, have a good time, and let's learn threat modeling together.